you very much. And I'd like to talk about what, what limits the number of observations that can be effectively assimilated, especially in the context of ensemble data simulation. And I have a lot of people to thank about, but just to name a few, I'm very grateful to these people. Thank, thank you very much. And the motivation comes from the, the, the growth of observations. So we have now about one million observations available for NWP application on each cycle, and this is going to grow even more with the advent of big data, for example, phased array, with the radar, which are very dense and massive. So, so the challenge is to extract as much information as possible from massive, dense observations. And then the important question to ask is, how much information can a DA system actually extract from observations? And one way to quantify the information from observation is called DFS, degrees for freedom for signal or information content. And what is DFS? It's defined as the trace of influence matrix S, which is HK. And you can interpret this with in two ways. One way to interpret this is to think of it as an analysis sensitivity to observation measured in observation space. And you can also think of it as the amount of information that the analysis from observations. Just to give you a simple, uh, uh, give you some idea about what uh, this is, I give two very extreme examples. One is forecast forecast cycle where you completely ignore observations. Then you have y a is y b, so s is no, so the trace is, trace is zero, so you don't get any information from observations. And another extreme case is a scheme is direct insertion where analysis is observation. Then you get s identity, so DFS is equal to the number of observations assimilated. So you have DFS per observation one. So you get 100 information from observation. So any practical scheme is somewhere in between these extreme schemes. And DFS was first introduced about 10 years ago by a group of ECMWF scientists. And it's become a popular diagnostics for, for variational data simulation systems. And they are actually routinely monitored by multiple operational centers. But this has not been used for ensemble data simulation. And the OET 2009 derived uh, this, this very simple expression, uh, derivation for estimating DFS in ensemble pharma filter. So uh, I decided to apply this method to JMA's global data simulation, ensemble data simulation system. So, so we have, at JMA, we have global LETKF with 50 members. And this work was initiated by Dr. Miyoshi about 10 years ago. And last month, it's got operational. Congratulations. And this is done by my colleague, Yoichi Rota. OK, by the way, so, so here's what I got with this DFS diagnostics. So uh, I show DFS per observation for different types of observations. And if you look at conventional observations, which are sparse observations, you get reasonable DFS from these observations about, about on the order of about 10%. However, if you look at dense observations like satellite, and especially very dense hyperspectral sounders, IRZ and AS, you get very small DFS, less than 1%. So this, so I, but I tried very hard to understand why we have such bizarre results. So no, normally, when you get some exotic results, it's bug. But I tried very hard to look at, find a bug, but I didn't find. And my answer is diff different. So my answer is that there's no enough of the enough ensemble with our system, which is only 50 members. You can show with some algebraic argument that for any ensemble common filter local analysis, DFS is always smaller than k minus 1, where k is the size of, ensemble, size of the ensemble. So 
if you think of a region with very dense observations, and if you think of local analysis here, DFS for optimal analysis should be on the order, it should be proportional to the number of observations. So it should be very large. But if you have only K member ensemble and you do ensemble analysis, DFS is always smaller than K minus one. So you get underestimated DFS. So uh, here's the proof of DFS smaller than K minus one. And I think I don't have time to go over this, but uh, what we do is to start from this familiar equality, which says that analysis, accuracy of analysis is sum of the accuracy of the background and observation. And we introduce normalized observation operator H prime. And the, the essential part is to do eigenvalue decomposition on H prime B H prime transpose. And then you can show from this equation that the eigenvalues of this matrix, uh, normalized analysis error covariance in observation space, is equal to, can be expressed by this, where lambda b is eigenvalues of this. So this is always smaller than one. So <coughs> it follows that under optimality, DFS is expressed as the sum of the eigenvalues of this matrix. So you get this always smaller than the rank of this matrix, which is normally the number of observations. So for ensemble local analysis, and just for now, ignore, we ignore localization. Then we, we know that for ensemble system, you, uh, approximate background covariance by this sample covariance. And because the rank of this matrix is smaller than the, the, the rank of any of these matrix, which is, so, which is normally k minus one, you can show that DFS of ensemble is always smaller than k minus one. Okay. Oh, okay, so, and this also applies to ensemble var as well. So you're perhaps thinking, DFS is underestimated, so, so what? And I, I'm going to say that this has many important implications. If DFS is underestimated in your analysis, it means that you are not extracting further information from observation. And specifically, because analysis increment is in observation spaces, HKD, and where HK can be written as HA, H transpose, or inverse, you can say that if DFS is underestimated, it implies that your analysis increment is smaller than what you get with optimal analysis. And what I, what I think is more important here is that because DFS is a measure of analysis spread in observation space, Underestimated DFS implies that you are overconfident about your analysis. So what, what happens is that you need very large inflation to get the system running. But if you do, if you apply too strong inflation, that leads to inaccurate representation of the errors of the day, which is exactly the, the, the advantage of doing ensemble assimilation. So, uh, we can say something about in what condition ensemble comma filter is okay using this, di this diagnostic. So ensemble comma filter becomes suboptimal when ensemble size is smaller than the DFS of the optimal system. So if, so small k should be okay if DFS is small under optimality. And this is small when observations are less accurate than the background because DFS can be written as this and lambda b is eigenvalues of this matrix. So if, if you have this relation, if observation is not very accurate, you get very small eigenvalues. So, so DFS under optimality is small if observations are less, less accurate than background. And also, if uh, the distribution of the eigenvalues of this 
uh, background covariance, a small number of dominated one, dominating ones, then you have local low dimensionality in observation space. And in this case, uh, you, you can use, you, 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 it's okay to have a small ensemble. Okay, so to, to see how this works in, in reality, and I did some idealized experiments. I, I used a simple covariance model from Bishop and Hollis paper, and it's a 1D periodic domain with perfect P and R and unbiased and Gaussian errors. And I, uh, the, the B covariance assumed here is close to Gaussian with almost zero correlation beyond 15 grid interval, and variance is one everywhere. And I consider two cases. One is when observation is equally accurate as background. In this case, you expect that DFS should be about the number of observations divided by two or something, which is about 60. And from this, you expect that about 100 members should be required. And the another case is where observation is much less accurate. In this case, observation has, doesn't have much information, so it, it should be okay to have small ensemble. And here's what we really get. And I plot DFS estimated by ensemble against the member size. So if observations are accurate, you have about the DFS of about 40, which is good compared to my rough estimate of 60. And this, importantly, this is always underestimated than the optimality, optimal value. And if observations are good, then you have to have many members to have convergence. But you, you, have, you have to have at least 200 to 300 members in this case. But if observations are not accurate, it's OK to have much less members. And this is what I think is very most important. So trace of A is, um, is analysis squared squared should, should be about equal to the analysis error. But if you have, a, if you have large DFS, then you, you have to have many members to have these two quantities equal. So what, what what you get is trace of A much smaller than actual analysis error. So you have you are very overconfident about your analysis. And if observations are not accurate, this problem is not so big. So I would like to think about localization. I, I deliberately ignore this localization up to here, but you can uh, use localization to increase the effective sample size. So uh, we can use DFS thinking to understand what localization does. And to examine this, I show the, the eigenvalues of this matrix. And here, I show the eigenvalue distribution of HA, H transpose under optimality. You get something like this. And if you don't do any localization, and you, if you have 40 members, you have only 39 eigenvalues that are non-zero. But if you do localization in, to B in model space, as in ensemble bar, you get very good uh, ensemble eigenvalue distribution. This is very good. But if you do R localization, as in LHKF, unfortunately, what we get is this. And we have truncation at k minus 1. So from this perspective, I would say that uh, our localization is not very good in, in terms of DFS. And uh, I'd like to dis discuss how DFS arguments can be used to interpret mysterious results from the literature. Some, some there are some research which says that in ensemble common filter, using less observation is better. 
this is very difficult to understand because if you have more observation, you should have more information to improve analysis. But it actually, it's the opposite. And th there will be a talk about this by Goi Wen on Thursday morning. And you can justify this by my, my DFS argument. And also, there are many inf successful inflation methods, but and just I, gi I give just two examples. And curiously, these inflate A rather than B. And this is difficult to interpret if you think of inflation as accounting for Q term in this B equal MA M transpose plus Q. But with DFS argument, I believe that it's very natural to inflate A rather than B because you are overconfident A. And there's another very interesting paper by Tsirunikov, 2010. He said that he, he analyzed localization scale and the relationship between localization, optimal localization scale and member size from different existing research. And he concluded that optimal localization scale occurs when local analysis domain is small enough so that the ensemble size is comparable to the what he called observed degrees of freedom within the local patch. And my interpretation is that this, what, what he calls by observed degrees of freedom is exactly DFS under optimality. And with this interpretation, he, what he claimed can be interpreted with this very simple criteria. DFS and optimality should be close to your ensemble size. Okay. Okay, and here's my summary and conclusion. So, so my, the, the title of my talk was, what limits the number of observations that can be assimilated? And my answer is that discrepancy of DFS computed from true covariance and your covariance that is assumed by your analysis scheme limits the number of observations that can be effectively assimilated. And I believe that may, there are many important and interesting implications about localization and inflation derived from this simple fact. Okay, and one last thing I would like to say is that when you have come up with a new idea or methodology, we, we tend to test it with a scenario where the number of model space is very large, but you have relatively small number of observations that is close to ensemble size. But because we are having big data, I suggest that we test your new idea with this setting where number of observations is much larger than your ensemble size. Okay, think I stop here and happy to take questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.